everyone. Good to have you on today at Around the Coffee Pot uh, here at Real Home Cooking. This segment of our show, Tuesday through Thursday mornings, uh, is dedicated to talking about food and news and as food and news collide. So uh, today what we're going to be doing is talking about Gordon Ramsay. Uh, really not even talking so much about Gordon Ramsay as we will be talking about ourselves. Uh, Gordon Ramsay has a show called Kitchen Nightmares and he also has a show called Hotel, is it Hotel Hell or something like that? Um, but what he does is he goes in and yeah, Hotel Hell. He goes in and he, he tries to revamp and re-energize and go in and, and uh, help failing businesses to get back on the right track. He does it in his own very unique way, very entertaining way for us, those looking on the outside. But I want to, I, I actually, this actually came up in Bible study on yesterday. We were looking at, uh, we were talking about change and changing and our different strongholds, things that have a stronghold upon you. And I thought it'd be appropriate thing for us to talk about today as well, because, um, 2018 is coming up. Uh, good morning, Steve-O. Good morning, J. Bond H. Potter. And uh, good morning, everyone else who is out there who hasn't commented yet. But I see your numbers. I see that you're out there. So good morning to you. So 2018 is coming up. And I just can't believe it that this year is almost over. 2017 feels like it just was ushered in and now we're getting ready to start singing uh, and, and bringing in 2018. Truly, as you get older, the years go faster. And uh, that was something someone told me, but I would definitely believe it now. Nevertheless, what we want to talk about today is life, life lessons on change 2018 new year's resolutions and i want to talk about this guy up here this guy up here is that my pointing to the right side um i want to want to talk about ramsey ramsey is uh, uh uh like i said entertaining but he goes into businesses that are failing all right, and in Hotel Hell, in Kitchen Nightmares, he goes into places that are distressed, that, you know, management has been doing a horrible job, and um, he goes in and does the dirty work to try to do a few things that you need done in order to get some change in your life. And uh, so I'm going to be a little preachy today. In the, sense, in the sense that we're going to be talking about some of our issues and all that. Um, what, one of the things I, I, I want to first say is that, that before you can change, before whether it's going to be, look, you got to make a change in your marriage, whether it's change in your eating, a change in, in weight, change in whatever. You want to be a little more assertive. You want to be a little less assertive. You want to, you know, whatever it might be that you uh, uh, want to make a change in the very first thing there has to be is desire. Desire. Anyone who gets on the kitchen Ramsey night, I mean, uh, Ramsey kitchen nightmares, uh, anyone who's gotten on his show first had to send out a letter and, and uh, apply to become on the show. So obviously you can see that there was some sort of desire some sort of desire to get some help. And that's that's what we have. If we're gonna need, if we're gonna get some change in our own lives, we're gonna first have to have that desire. That desire that says, hey, look, I, I need help and I need someone to help me. Even if this guy is gonna come and, uh, man, he's gonna come and tell me some things I don't wanna hear, et cetera, et cetera. But first thing has to be desire. 
And so that has to get be cultivated. Sometimes desire has to be cultivated. Sometimes it's not within us to even want to make that change. But maybe there's some, some outside influences. Maybe it's peer pressure. Uh, maybe it's a spouse. Maybe it's children. Maybe it's, you know, others that are helping to cultivate that desire. But before change can take place, you've got to have a desire to change. So after that desire, I think what's important, and one thing, one of the things I see in Kitchen Nightmares is, and one thing that Gordon Ramsay is great at doing, is confronting you with truth. That's the second thing. You've got to have the first desire, but then you've got to be confronted with truth. What does he do when he goes into the restaurant? The first thing he does, he orders something on the menu. All right, and then the food comes out, and you'll see him all the time. Here he is with the spoon of whatever it might be, and they go, oh. And he spits it out, and he tells them how horrible it is. And every now and then, some, something will actually be good, and he'll actually say, hey, it's good. But most of the times, he has no problems just telling you the very truth. He also looks around at the area, and he goes, you know, look at the decor in the room where he's sitting. He, he'll, he'll go into the kitchen and put the gloves on, or even not even a glove. He'll just start... start putting his finger on top of the appliances and on top of vent hoods and all sorts of things. And he finds grease and grime and, 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 and all sorts of nastiness. He'll go into the walk-in freezers and, and, and refrigerators and he'll, he'll start pulling things out and smelling things and checking dates and you know doing all these things. And then as soon as he finds something that's out of place, he's calling everyone to get, everyone to get over here. Why is he doing that? Because in order to get better, you have to be confronted with the truth, even if it's ugly, even if it stinks, even if it's nasty, even if whatever it might be, you got to be confronted with the truth. And sometimes, yeah, that's right, Tan, sometimes he's yelling at people in order to confront them with the truth. But the reality is that sometimes that's exactly what's needed because people w will pacify you. People will just allow you to continue to go by without confronting the true issue. I, w I was talking about uh, interventions. And really, in a sense, that's what he's doing. He's doing an intervention for them. Uh, and interventions, what do they do? Is they confront people who have dip bad habits and uh, whether it's alcoholism or drugs or you know whatever it might be. And they'll get people loved ones and individuals that this person has relationships with and they put them all in one room and then the guy or the girl comes in and then all of a sudden they're like what is going on here and then they make them sit down and start talking to them about the truth this is what you're doing this is how it's affecting others this is how you know it's affecting yourself this is if you continue down this line this is where it's going to go uh and, and, and they're hearing it from all these other people. And that truth is supposed to sink in and do something, right? Sometimes people are resistant. I'll see that you'll see this in Kitchen Nightmares where the owner, man, he's been the big shot. He's been calling all the things. And he, you hear you got somebody from the outside coming in and telling me what to do. And sometimes you're like, you know what? I'm off this show. Forget it. Get out of here. Get out of here, Gordon. Get out of here, you camera crew. Everyone get out, you know, because what's happening is they're being confronted with the truth of who they are, of how bad their business is, of how bad their food is, of how bad their leadership style is, of how bad things are. And finally, when that can be overwhelming to someone who has gotten comfortable living in this world that they were living in. All right. So what he does is he brings them that truth. Next thing is to change the behavior. All right. So if you see the truth of who you are, and then you have to realize, well, okay, if I, I've got to do something different, I've got to do something different. I, 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 I don't know if you've read this book, um, who moved my cheese, who moved my cheese. And in Who Moved My Cheese, there were four characters in there. They're, they're uh, 
sniff and scurry and hem and haw. Sniff, scurry, hem and haw. Sniff, scurry, hem and haw. Four mice in a maze and in this station there was all this abundance of cheese and cheese was always there every single day. Every single day the cheese was there. Then one day, sniff, scurry, hem and haw, get to the station to get their cheese for the day and all of a sudden the cheese is gone. That's why they call the book who moved my cheese. It's been moved. It's actually not even gone. It's just been moved. So they're looking and they go, okay, well, there's no cheese here. And all of a sudden, Sniff and Scurry go, you know what? <laughs> all right, no more cheese here. We got to go. We got to go find some new cheese. And Ham and Haw stay there and Ham and Haw. They're like, man, who moved? Who moved my cheese? Who moved my cheese? Who, you know, uh, uh, um, took the cheese out of here and then they started asking themselves, well, what are we going to do about it? And they just stay there and hem and haw about who is going to, you know, about when the cheese is going to come back. So next day, no cheese. Next day after that, no cheese. Sniff and Scurry had already left. All, all of a sudden, finally, haw... Is it Haw? Which one was it? Hem? Anyway, one of one of them, one of them uh, decided to, why don't we venture out? Maybe Sniff and Scurry found new cheese. Why don't we leave and go to get the new cheese? And I believe Haw was sitting there like, no, I'm not not going anywhere i'm not doing anything i'm going to stay right here until the cheese comes back now here the moral story is look sometimes you can get convenient you know things are going well life is going well you're used to this you're, you know and and man this has been feeding you and all of a sudden you you're stuck there because it's been good but all of a sudden that closes that door closes that cheese is moved Sniff and Scurry were quick and said, you know what? Time to get out of here. Ham and Hall just stayed there continuing, continuing, continuing to do the same old thing and wanting to get different results by doing the same thing. And that just doesn't happen. You don't do the same thing and get different results. You do the same thing, you're going to get the same result. Continue doing what you're doing. You're going to continue to have on what you're having. In order to get something new, you got to do something different so finally whoever left which will hem or haul leaves and he finds the new cheese and he even brings it back to his buddy he sees sniff and skirt sitting there just eating new cheese and he he grabs a little bit of the new cheese and goes back to his buddy who's still hemming and hauling and he tries to present him hey man we got new cheese let's go on over and get this new cheese and the guy's malcontent and he's just like no I don't want the new cheese I don't want that I'm going to stay here and wait for my cheese for the old cheese to come back and this gets me into mindsets that sometimes we can be stuck in an old mindset stuck in our old ways not adaptable to change not willing to change behaviors and to do something different to try things different you know if you're gonna if, if you're gonna get something better out of life you're going to have to do things different and be willing to do things different this channel is something different listen i i I love YouTube and I have made a lot of money on YouTube. I'm not going to lie about it. I've made a lot of money on YouTube. Um, the way in which I was making money on YouTube changed. And instead I decided, you know what, I'm, I'm going to change. Now, right now on this channel, I'm not making much money on YouTube. The way I was working YouTube, I was making a whole lot of money. What I'm doing now on YouTube is not making a whole lot of money, but I believe there's potential 
I believe there's potential now. So I'm doing something completely new, even though I'm not even seeing a lot of fruit from it right now. So, but sometimes you have you have to be willing. If if I continue doing the old thing, it's not working anymore. It's not working anymore. So I've got you've got to branch out and do something new. All right, you've got to branch out and do something new. All right, I see people are not as engaged in this. I don't know if it's just a topic. This is something you didn't want to hear. Um, I'm going to keep going anyway because I believe there is great value in this. Is there anybody out there still? Anybody out there in the world? Are you following me today? Is this making any kind of sense? Am I being too preachy? You can tell me the truth. You can tell me the truth. <laughs> All right. So then after that, look, he, uh, Ramsey goes in. He, he, he looks around. First of all, the people had a desire. Now he's confronted them with the truth. Uh, now he's trying to set up different behaviors for them, saying, look, this is how you need to organize your books. This is how you need to do this. This is how you need to uh, um, uh, operate. And matter of fact, not only that, he comes in and they will break down the kitchen, bring in new equipment, give you a whole uh, new... Uh, I mean, they start putting new stuff all over the place. The place looks brand new. They throw out the old furniture. They take down the wallpaper. They, they, you know, in the dining area, it, it becomes a whole new thing, a new concept. They give you a new menu with new foods. And I mean, you're talking about new. That's what he does. He gives them the whole new way to operate. They go out and they promote to the community and say, hey, Gordon's over here and he's doing something with these people. Come on in for the relaunch. And, and so now all of a sudden things are it's busy again, it's bustling again, money's coming through the door. But the fourth thing that you have to do is commit to new habits, commit to the new habits. All right, you can have a plan. You can have things that are new. But unless you commit to the new habits and the new way of doing things, it's not going to work. There's a show that um, that uh, <laughs> Jay Potter Jay Wayne says he's hungry. All right, I understand, brother. Get yourself a sandwich. Get yourself a sandwich. I'm hungry too. All I've got is this coffee right now. But you got you got to commit to the new habits, even with everything that has been. done the time the effort the money the resources and everything that's been put in guess what ramsey has to leave he's only with them for a few days about a week i think a week max he's only with them for about a week and then he leaves he set them up he's given them a new path he's given them a new look he's given them uh some new instructions a new menu new a lot of things but just because you get motivated and all of those things doesn't mean anything unless you commit to it commit to it you got to commit to working the plan uh, commit to doing the little things that are necessary commit to being to, to that change you know I, I hope you're looking at this from the lens of whatever things that you need to change in your life because that's what I'm talking about I'm not really so much talking about Gordon I'm not really even talking so much about um, that story as it is talking about us, talking about us and things. So, so as you're thinking about the things that we're talking about, what are some things in 2018 that you're going to do different? What are some things in 2018 that you're going to do different to better your life, to get healthier, to, to enhance your relationships, to get closer to your God, to, to, you know, to do things that are going to be more beneficial to you. And to you know to, to to those that are around you what are some things that you can do um, let's see what else then the last thing so I've got five five items first was desire second was truth third was behavior um, uh, he's got to be adaptable he's got to be willing to change fourth is commit to new habits and fifth is perseverance. Perseverance. You got to go in with the idea that 
you're in it to win it. You're in it for the long haul. You're in it to win it. You're in it for the long haul. You're in it for, you know, if this change is going to take place, it usually... Usually you didn't get into the habit. Usually you didn't get into that mindset. Usually you didn't get into it quickly. It was a progression. It was a, it was some time that took in order to get you to the place where you are. And, and those habits have become in, entrenched. And in order to change them, you're going to have to put the time in, the effort, the work in order to do so. And that is going to be a little laborious. It's going to take some time. It's going to take some time. So perseverance is is, is needed. Uh, you've got you've got to go in it for the long haul. It's not a quick. There are no quick fixes. Usually, quick fixes don't work. Matter of fact, as we're talking about kitchen nightmares, most of the places. If you ever have you ever watched the uh, kitchen nightmare revisited. That's when they go back to the places where Gordon has um, has gone. They go back to the restaurants. They go back to the hotels. They go back to these places and maybe a year later, a couple years later and go, how are things going? And sometimes you have he has successes, but I'm telling you the overwhelming amount of times, uh, the, the uh, most of them rather, they go back. They go back to operating how they were. They go back to doing, even with the new facelift, even with the new reputation, even with the new menu, even with everything else. When you fixed everything else, they go back. And it, that tells us that, you know, it's a, the, the struggle to success in every, any part of life that struggle of success is a, is a hard one. It's one that you have to work. It's, it's you got to stay on the grind. You got to continue to seed. You got to continue to do the work. You got to pull the weeds up. You got to get out and do the work. You got, I mean, it's, it's work. It's work to change. There are going to be, there's opposition. There's going to be, you know, different things that are going to come to try to challenge you moving in that right direction. But if you continue going, you will make a success out of it. Like this channel, I'm saying, look, I'm learning a little, I'm learning a little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more. I, be, I believe it's going to be fruitful at some point. I believe that it's something, it's something's going to take off if, if I just continue doing the things I need to do. You plant the seeds, you continue doing it, you continue watering, you can, you know, little by little, persevere. So, that's right, Tam, people are creatures of habit. Yeah, and, and I don't know about you, but have there been any of you who have tried to help somebody and you thought, you thought that if, look, if I move them out of the environment they're in, give them a job or help them to get a job or help them to get on their feet. They can come in and move in my house and I'm going to feed them. I'm going to take care of them. I'm going to give them some, some better structure. I'm going to do da, 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 da. And, and in our mind, it all sounds good. But the, the problem is, is that, does that person have a desire? Does that person, is that person committed to change? Is that, you know, sometimes we impose that on someone else thinking that, yeah, if we put the right environment around them, automatically they're going to change and do the right things. They just need a chance. They just need help. No, sometimes that person, within that person, they need to gain that desire and, and that want to change. So I'm down off my soapbox now. 2018 is coming up. And I just wanted to give a, a challenge out there or something uh, that you might be thinking about as we're looking at 2018. Boom, it's right here upon us already. Whew. This month is almost over. This year is almost over. 2018 is coming in. And uh, what does it have in store for you? What does it have in store for you? For you. I'm, I'm hoping great things. Uh, assess 
our life. Let's let's assess our lives. Let's um, look at those areas where we can uh, make some changes, and uh, let's commit to it. All right. God bless. I'm, I'm glad you're here with me. Glad so many of you guys been with me from episode number one, from video number one, um, and uh, I've been having fun fun with this. Then this has been challenging too. There's sometimes. I wake up and I'm like, oh, I don't even want to get in front of the camera. I don't even want to put up a video. Uh, so I, I, I can I can be lazy, uh, you know, and, and not just lazy. I wear a lot of hats. I do a lot of different things, but, you know, got to keep seeing, got to keep doing, got to keep, keep going. And uh, you will reap. The Bible says you will reap if you faint not. So don't give up. Continue going, continue moving, continue going in the right direction. God bless you. Take care. Till tomorrow. Tomorrow's at 11 o'clock. Friday, 11 o'clock. We're going to be doing a cooking demonstration. And I'm going to have some little helpers with me. Uh, at least one. My daughter will be off of school on tomorrow for their holiday break already. So we want to encourage you to be here Manana, 11 o'clock. I'll see you there. God bless. Take care. Till next time. Ciao.